Welcome, Welcome to the View. Welcome to the View. The, uh, Another video edition. The Ernie, the all about the the fight between Ernie and I, the fight we've been having. So, uh, yes, yeah, so some of the first. viewers have mm -hmm. been wondering whether Michael and I have been feuding because we haven't had an episode in more than a month by the time this publishes. And in fact, the answer is no. <laughs> or I don't think That's we right. have been. Have we been? I, I haven't been fighting with you. Have you been fighting with me? I have not been fighting with you. Yeah, it, it's actually... And you know, it's a good thing. Might, right, it is a good thing. But people might actually think that um, we're fighting because you might see long gaps in the Pew episodes. But in fact, it's really mundane, the reasons for that. I mean, it's so mundane. I don't even want to say it. <laughs> but, but, you know, it's such a cliche because, like, we, we you know, we, we look at the camera and the, next, uh, the, can the calendar and the next thing you know, it's next month. And it feels like it was yesterday that we just filmed. Um, Ernie was on vacation for a week. Um, you know. That's right. I went to Miami Beach. And how was that? It was really fun. You know, it, Miami Beach looks so different from when it looked the times that we used to go in the early 90s to do parties there. And in yeah. fact, I was trying to, when we were walking around Miami Beach, I was trying to remember what theater it was that we did that big party where we almost got I think it was. A, I, think our, it was a, I think it was a cameo. Cameo? Or well, yeah, I, was, We did two parties. One was a cameo, one was at Warsaw, Warsaw Ballroom. Uh, so one of them was a theater, I remember, it had a marquee in front. and That was a cameo. I saw, I saw a couple of theaters that looked like it might have been the place that we did the party. And Where Claire the, the Chicken was out on the, on the marquee? <laughs> I think, at, no, I think at that time we were both wearing our assless outfits and the police uh, officer said if we didn't well, go some, inside the club, he would arrest us. Yes, wasn't somebody wearing Can you believe Claire it? The, the old Miami Beach, you couldn't show your butt. Well, we were almost arrested at the outlaw party. Remember the outlaw party in the, in the alleyway with Lee Bowery? Lee was almost arrested too. We had to talk to them. I think you talked them out of arresting them by telling them the police that he was from London. <laughs> well, like that really, that's really a feather in it, your pocket. It, well, you know? no, it wasn't a feather in, in a pocket, but it explained, I think, his eccentricities. You said he was Why he was crazy. Right. <laughs> but I mean, he was... He's from he, London. He's he from has London. special needs. I mean, we were all extremely drunk, carrying bottles of booze and half naked, and um, in an alleyway in, in Miami. But um, it was—I think it was the sun was coming up already. Don't, don't they have twenty-four hour uh, liquor lodge down there? I don't know if they do. Well, the club that I, I went I, I to, think they do. I believe. Well, the club I went to, I believe, closed at either four or five. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't quite 24 hours, but I do remember back then they did. I mean, there were clubs that were open yeah. until six or seven. Oh, I remember. Hours. Yes, yes, of course they do because it was a big deal. They got they the mayor. Um, in order to revitalize the town, the, the city, the mayor uh, got a special 24-hour um, liquor license for clubs. So you have to pay extra for it, of course. But um, Rudolph, that's why Rudolph went down there and he opened um, Nerve and Billboard, Billboard Live. Well, that law worked because let me tell you, Miami Beach oh, is completely, it, it's completely transformed from the way it used to be. Uh, now it's well, all, it's but even just then, like Manhattan. Even, well, yeah, well, I guess. <laughs> but even then it was transformed um, because it, at that time it was transformed from what it was just previous to that. And it was, um, it was literally nothing. It was like a ghost, a ghost town. And there goes, now my, my, uh, the lighting in the photo just went down because I'm not touching it. Does that affect the no. Okay. Just pr press the little arrow button and it'll come yeah, back I did. on. Yeah, I did. So, yeah, it was revitalized then. So, I can imagine now. I mean, it, it was really kind of jumping back then. Pat Field had a store down there, Alfredo Valoria. Um, there were a lot of people that were kind of going back and forth from um, from London, uh, from, from Miami to New York. And in fact, that was when Rudolph came up with his, um, his fabulous Trendies uh, um, concept, which is that. Uh, nowadays, people are going from city to city um, to party in different cities because a certain city is hot. And so you see them, you said, traveling in the airports with their designer luggage um, back and forth, uh, like you, like we used to catch cabs, now we catch planes back and forth from city to city. Uh, well, and, you know what? I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that there's anything fabulous or trendy about Miami Beach now. I mean, it literally is like an, a giant outdoor mall. You know, it has all the stores yeah. that you would see in the mall. It's all uh, glistening yeah. as expensive restaurants and people that go there. I mean, it's like everybody going there thinking that it's really chic, but it's really not. You know, I was, just, uh, I was just talking it's like, to somebody. It's like Fifth Avenue. I was talking to somebody the other day who lives in Puerto Rico and um, 
and we were saying the same thing that all these Americans want to go to Puerto Rico and they get to Puerto Rico and they go right to the Holiday Inn or right to the, you know, whatever, that so they can be surrounded with things that remind them of home and it's almost as if they never left home. Uh, I mean, I've been to San Juan. I haven't been to and to the outskirts of uh, San Juan, but I can't really say I know Puerto Rico that well. I mean, it it didn't really seem like a foreign country. <laughs> I mean, it's part of the United States, so of San course Juan isn't. Yeah, San Juan isn't really Puerto Rico. San Juan is like the American Puerto Rico. Um, if you go to the smaller towns, it's more. Well, Puerto I don't. Rico. I don't know what that. You know, I mean, I guess the small towns look like little small towns that you'd see in other parts of Latin America. Right, but why? Why would you want to go to those? They're not fun. They're interesting. Oh, really. uh, see, I would think I would think that those are the, that's where the fun is, um, because San Juan is you know you might as well be going to you know uh, uh, to Patterson. <laughs> uh, San Juan is nicer than Patterson. Well, I don't mean that. I don't mean quality. I mean it's like just way nicer. Place. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking out the window. I suppose I, I can. Um, although, we do have this really cool place called the Art Factory here that I want to talk about maybe in another episode. Um, that, um, that actually you should come visit. It's a, it's a complex of art buildings and music studios and film production studios and everything. And we, we could talk to them about filming on the show there. My favorite thing about Patterson are the Peruvian, Colombian, Turkish, and Arabic mm -hmm. restaurants. Oh. Because mm -hmm. they're all really good. Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to say something else. Um, have you no. have you eaten in all of them? Have you eaten in all of them? Uh, yeah, well, I used to work in Patterson for two years. I worked there, so oh, I oh, that's right, you did the the newspaper thing there. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I and that's when, there. and you lived in Hoboken. Yes. Yeah. Hoboken's expensive now. Yes, it is. It's like Manhattan. It is, and it's kind of. I, I like it actually because I, I take the train to there before I get the um, the uh, path train sometimes and um it, it's actually very nice so is jersey city no jersey city is not nice jersey city is like no shop. jersey like city shopping just, well just, i mean it's like it reminds me of of, 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 of dubai that just this long strip washington boulevard i think it is um of beautiful skyscrapers but you know from a distance but when you're there there's no street traffic there's no like you know Businessy kind of like back and forth hustle bustle mom and pop shops. You know, it's all you know, double tree uh, Hilton Hotel. You know, like nothing, you know, nothing interesting at all. Well, that street is not representative of Jersey City. I would say that the more representative areas of Jersey City are uh, Grove Street and Journal Square and Jersey City Heights. I've been to Grove, Grove Street. That's where the train gets let off. Grove Street. Yeah, that, that's where actually kind of nice. All the cool restaurants yeah. and bars are. Yeah, I saw that. So it's kind of like saying like you went to Manhattan and, and you went to Wall Street and you didn't think it was cool. Well, you know, if you had gone to the East Village, maybe you would have liked it better. I didn't realize Jersey City was so big. I thought I kind of thought that big strip was the. No, it's quite big. Mm. It's I believe it's the second biggest city in New Jersey. Well, there is After enough hustle or and bustle there. maybe it's the biggest. There's enough hustle and bustle there that I think probably a lot of people are taking this new pill that I wanted to talk about. Um, All right, we're going to talk about that after our break. Oh, okay. We'll be right back. And now a word from our sponsor. Welcome back to the Pew. Welcome, Welcome back to back the Pew. To the Pew, where, where Michael has a new pill, <laughs> and he's not um, sharing. And, no, I am going to share. I'm, I'm just not going to tell you the name of it, because they won't tell, the, the media that I've seen and read about it won't tell us the name of it, um, probably because they don't want to encourage us to go out and get it. Um, but it's... A, oh, I could, this, get, I could get a pill very similar to that. You could? Yeah. What's it called? sounds like uh, It sounds like it's... What's the pill that the hyperactive people take? Like Ritalin, Ritalin or Adderall? Ritalin. Yeah, Adderall. Ritalin. No, Everybody's Ernie. Come on, Ernie. I'm so embarrassed that you even said that. You know better than anybody. <laughs> that, I don't know. Um, I, I can't even remember taking uh, Adderall or Ritalin because, well, you know, but, it's so easy to get cocaine and crystal meth. Why would I want Adderall or well, Ritalin? Well, that's what I was getting at is that <laughs> it's, it's, it's basically crystal meth, meth and, and you... But with this new pill, you stay up, it says, four days in a row. Without You take one pill, and you're up for four days. 
um, you don't have to keep doing it. It's just it's a one-time thing. And um, there are apparently no side effects. It sounds very similar to what uh, everybody was saying in Studio 54 days about cocaine, that it was, because it's hard to believe, but at that no time. No side effects from cocaine. Right. right. People really, but, but well, people really believe that. I mean, they. Um, I don't think that, no, I don't think. You think this subconsciously knew? Wait a minute. Cocaine was made illegal in like 1910 or 1912. So back then, they already knew cocaine was bad for you. Well, so by the 70s, 60 years I don't later, think, no, I don't they think knew that, it was bad. I don't think that's why it was bad. I made it illegal already. I, I, don't, yeah. I don't think because it was bad for you. I don't think that was yes. the reason. That's the reason, yeah. Uh, I think it was, no, I don't think it was. Um, I think it was because there was no um, legitimate um, use for it. There's plenty of legitimate. Uses. Well, I know. <laughs> I know. Well, anyway, uh, this drug is, for, is similar to the drug in that movie. Remember that movie where you take the drug and it makes you like really smart for a little while. And you have all this information, but then you have to you have to take the drug again in order to not come down from it. Remember that movie? Uh, not it made you. It made you like a genius. It was, it was like I think it was like ten years old. It was one of those Arnold Schwarzenegger, Repo Man, is futuristic kind of movies where um, these businessmen were taking this pill that was making them, um, keeping them awake and making them super smart, and they were able to um, figure out like Wall Street stuff and like you know invest in stuff that would go up and you know whatever. Um, but then you have to take the pill again um, in order to avert this awful come down that was like. You know, made you want to die. It was like, you know, well, that's well, what this pill sounds like. Except that. All right. Well, out. how many how many days in a row have you stayed up at the most? At one well, time? um, during those um wonderful um and enjoyable parties that Peter used to throw at the Four Seasons, um, that was I think the longest that I've ever stayed up, and I think it was probably seven. At the half, so at. So did you feel pretty good at the halfway mark, which would have been three and a half or four days? The halfway mark, I we felt good. Yes, um, we didn't start really, you know, feeling bad until probably day five, and um, and day five was really not. You don't, you didn't want to be around any of us. I mean, we were virtually at each other's throats. It was not a good scene. Yeah, but, we spent two but, more days with Peter, each other <laughs> because Peter wouldn't let us. He wouldn't let us stop. Every time we wanted to stop. Um, and we, we, we hit his drugs, we put rohypnol in his drink, we did everything. We, we were plotting with Alex over the phone, you know, what should we do? The, you know, and she said, and she'd say, has the rohypnol taken effect? We'd say, no, she could give her another one, you know. Take two rohypnols and call me in the morning. Right. Um, but every time we wanted to stop, we'd say, you know, oh, come on, you guys, you get to do this every day. I, I only get to do this, you know, once, once a week or <laughs> whatever. No, he really, I guess he did it probably like five, six times a year. So like every two months, but so during that two months he wouldn't do anything. So he was upset with us because we wanted to stop when um, when this was his you know once every two months thing, and he didn't want to um, stop until he wanted to stop. And if you stopped him um, before he was ready to stop, then to punish you, he would make you start all over again. From you would he, you would go to sleep, and then when you wake up, you have to start all over again because you ruined it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Go back. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, so we were up for seven days, and um, and I'm surprised that Peter could um keep up with us actually. See, I don't think that any you know you're not going to feel good no matter what you're on after like being up two or three days. You're just not um, good. two or three days. Yeah, especially if you have to work. Like you're saying that these guy Wall Street guys are taking it and they're up for four days. And well, working. There's no way. I've like seen after one day of not sleeping, I'm tired. I can't. I've, yeah. Well, I've I've seen I've seen footage of them on the drug, oh. um, and, and it's on you know CNN or like you know 2020 or whatever, and um, they seem completely normal. They seem you don't think they're on any drug at all. I mean, oh. um, they don't seem speedy. They don't seem. Um, they just seem kind of. They they seem very normal. Uh, I. So apparently there's no euphoria, um, no real oh, euphoria. Okay. Well, then just, there's no point in okay. Well, there's no point in well, taking it. Well, they're taking it in order to get to cram more work done because they're getting oh, that's ridiculous. they're getting eight. Well, they're getting a whole work week done in three or four days, so um, they can get two week work weeks done in a week, and that gives them the leg up over their competition. You know what? They're lame. That's lame. 
Well, um, I'll just, we will, I'll just take, we'll, I'll just stay with my euphoria, old fashioned euphoria. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they say this is the, um, the step, the, the missing link. It's going to be the missing link between um, these kind of euphoric drugs that you're talking about and the other drugs I think we mentioned in an episode before that that aren't actually chemicals but that affect the pleasure centers in your brain and um, it, like impu electrical impulses and they they, they, they put a, a probe into your brain and they can turn it on um, with a knob. If that pill doesn't make me high, I'm not interested. That makes you high. And they, they, it was on Nova. And the doctor, you saw him going, t t taking the, knob, the dial and going from, um, from sad to happy. And slowly, as he goes from sad, they're crying. And it goes happy, happy, happy. And then they smile. And then they start but laughing I'm always, I'm always happy, though. Um, well, uh, that's, not, that's not true, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on that note, mm -hmm. see you next time. All right, bye. Bye.